Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. I noticed recently that I hadn't done a book haul in close to a year. I don't know why. It's not like I stopped acquiring books, I get them at a pretty steady rate. Um, I just hadn't sat down and filmed one. So today I'm going to show you all of the books that I've acquired in the first quarter of this year. In fact, I think I will try to commit to doing book hauls quarterly um, and, you know, keep up with it because they are fun to film and you guys seem to like them. And also for me, it kind of reminds me that there are things I've bought that I haven't read yet and I should get around to that. So out of the batch that I'm going to show you today, I think I've read about half of these, which is pretty decent, but I need to pick up the pace in reading them. And for any of these that I've read that I've talked about, like in reviews or wrap-ups, I will link those videos for you. I'm gonna try to not sit here and regurgitate my thoughts on all of these again. <laughs> Some of them I read when I was on break and I'm not really committed to talking about all the stuff that I read when I was on break, so. Oh, and one other thing, I'm going to start talking about audiobooks and eBooks as well. I don't buy a lot of them, but I should share them. Other people include digital books in their book hauls all the time, and I don't know why it never occurred to me to do that too. So I will talk about physical books first, the ones that I have to show you, and then I will um, talk to you about the audiobooks and ebooks. So first up, the, one of the very first books that I bought this year was Botanical Color at Your Fingertips by Rebecca Desnos. This has nothing to do with what I usually read and talk about on my channel, but I started to get really into um, natural dyeing at the end of last year, and I have been getting some books on the topic that are really helpful. Um, so the whole concept of this is to like take, you know, plants, uh, flowers, bark, or like food scraps and extract color from them and use that to, to dye. Um, fiber. In my case, I'm mostly focused on wool and silk, which are protein fibers, which leads me to my one problem with this book. Um, Botanical Color at Your Fingertips is a self-published book. It's quite short, and I purchased it because the author has come up with a method of mordanting with soy milk or soya, which I was very curious about. But when I got this and flipped through it, I didn't read the whole thing. It's a reference book. I'm not going to read it from cover to cover. Um, I noticed that one, the soy milk mordanty method is really time intensive. I, I don't have time for that. Um, but also she is vegan and only works with cellulose fibers like um, linen and cotton, which is, I haven't, I haven't gotten into doing that yet. So this may be more helpful in the future when I do start using those fibers, but for right now, I didn't get a lot out of this. It does cover some of the really common um, things that you can do at home. Um, let's see, it covers lavender, um, onion skins, avocado, pomegranate, which is a great one to work with, things like that. So it is, it is accessible, but just not quite fitting with what I'm doing right now. Next is another nonfiction book, which you guys have probably heard me talk about before. This is Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire Society and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. I bought this as an audiobook and listened to it last year. It was one of my absolute favorite books of 2020, and I loved it so much that I decided to buy a print copy because I wanted to reread it, obviously, and I thought I would um, switch up to the print version and maybe take more notes or something um, when I did that. It's very difficult for me to, to take notes or remember to take notes when I'm listening to an audiobook, so I bought the physical copy and yeah, I will hopefully reread this sometime this year. And this is a book about asexuality. Um, it is a very intersectional look at the ace experience. So that it's very much that there is no one single asexual experience. It's looking at this cross section of a variety of people and how asexuality um, works and interacts with things like race and gender and disability and, and things like that. So I really loved this book. It spoke very much to me. I mean, I, I am asexual. <laughs> 
And for anybody, I know people often are very curious about asexuality, and I personally am not very keen to talk about it in depth as it relates to me. That's, that's a very private topic for me. But for people who want to know more about what asexuality is, read this book. Th this is a great explainer, explainer, introduction to the topic. <laughs> Getting off to a great start today. Mm hmm. Next, I finally bought copies of volume four and volume five of Monstrous. This is a kind of epic steampunk Asian inspired fantasy comic series. It's written by Marjorie Liu, and the beautiful, beautiful artwork is by Sana Takeda. Um, so, yeah, I had read um, volume four before, but I didn't own a copy, so I bought it and I reread it, and then I uh, finally got around to reading volume five, and I really enjoyed these. I. I should do more rereading of previous volumes in comic series because when I reread volume four, it made volume five make so much more sense. <laughs> I should just do that more frequently. Um, and I felt like in volume five, things started to seriously happen. Um, you know, this, the series is about this impending war between different races of people, the normal people, the magical people, it's very complicated, and it's been like impending war for a long time, but now the action has actually started in Volume 5, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Sometimes the series verges on a little bit too dark for my taste. Um, it can really get into the gore and the violence and a lot of really unpleasant people, but it's fascinating, and the artwork is so beautiful. Next up, some manga, The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 9 by Nagabe. This is another series that I love the artwork. Um, it has kind of this sketchy art style, which shouldn't work for me, but it really, really does. I just, I love the way that this, this series looks. Um, so this series is about a little girl named Shiva, who is being taken care of by a cursed one named Teacher. And for some reason, she doesn't have the curse. She doesn't turn into the kind of the monstrous form that the cursed people have. And various factions want her or want her soul because she's special in some way. Um, there, there's a lot more to it than that, but um, I just, I love it. And I've always loved the relationship between Shiva and Teacher. And I think it was volume eight where things started to really get shaken up and broke my heart a little bit. And volume nine, I had to read right away because cliffhanger. And yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about where the series is going. Sometimes it's a little bit slow. There have been some, some volumes of the series that I felt like it was treading water a little bit. It was still sweet and beautiful, but wasn't progressing the story fast enough. But right now, uh, the story seems to actually be picking up the pace a little bit, so really enjoyed that. Volume 10 is coming out next month. I cannot wait. Um, another thing that I read while I was on break, Reconstruction Stories by Alaya Don Johnson. Um, this is a story collection by Johnson. I really wanted to read something different by her after I read her novel, um, Trouble the Saints last year. I think I did, I did a review of that book and I really struggled with it. I just thought that it promised some things but was a bit too vague. It didn't really deliver on it. So I wanted to, I didn't want to give up on Aliyah Don Johnson. So I decided to read her first short story collection and I'm really glad I did because this was a very interesting collection. I didn't love every story in it, but it, it was very well written, and a bunch of the stories just had interesting ideas in them. Um, so this contains A Guide to the Fruits of Hawaii, which is probably the short story novelette that Johnson is really well known for. Um, I read this back in January, so I don't remember exactly what titles go with the stories that I really liked, but um, yeah, I was quite impressed by this, and I think that in this case, I may just enjoy Johnson's short fiction more than her novels at the moment, but, you know, at this point I'm open to reading more, more by her in the future, so I was a little bit worried there for a bit that I wouldn't like anything by her. 
Um, and then I got two of Rachel Ignatowski's books. Um, these are for younger readers and I love her art style so much and her books are just like a nice warm hug. So first of all I got Women in Sports. This is the middle book from her Women in History series that includes um, women in science and women in art. And while I'm not a sports person by any means, um, I did enjoy reading this and decided to complete my collection and buy a copy of it. And maybe I should reread it as well. Um, but this is a little bit of her her art style. Um, this is the one book by her so far I think that hasn't had a puzzle come out to match it, which makes me a little bit sad because I love the um, I think they're the Potter puzzles that come out with her her artwork on them. They're so beautiful. And then I got her new book that came out in February, which is called What's Inside a Flower? And Other Questions About Science and Nature. Um, this is for much, much younger readers. It actually has very little text in it. I still enjoyed it a lot though. I mean, it's about botany. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> Next up are the three short middle grade books by Diana Wynne-Jones that I recently did a review video for. So if you want to know more about these three, I will link that you can go watch it. Um, but these are Earwig and the Witch, Freaky Families, and Vile Visitors. And I enjoyed them. They were really cute and fun and quick to read and kind of a blast from the past. But um, that being said, they're not my favorite things by Jones. I do prefer her. Her work's for slightly older readers, but this was, it was just kind of a comfort read to, to get around to these three. Um, I've been talking about these books in the order in which I acquired them and I'm now getting up to the more recent acquisitions that I haven't read and therefore do not have as much to talk about. So the first one is Passing by Nella Larson. This is a classic work by a black author that came... I came across it when people were talking about... Britt Bennett's new book from last year. I think it was called The Vanishing Half. I haven't read it, but it's a story about two black sisters, one of whom chooses to pass as white and the other one does not. And some people brought up passing um, because it's, it's a very, very similar story. And so it was on my TBR just to check it out. I kind of feel the itch to get to classics every once in a while. And when I noticed it was in the Penguin English Library edition, I had to get it. <laughs> it's very tiny. It's much, much shorter than I expected it to be. So I should just sit down and read that in an evening. And then I also got myself a copy of Orlando by Virginia Woolf. I've talked about this book before. Um, I think it came up in a Q&A uh, maybe a year and a half ago about like a book that I always mean to read but never get around to, that would be Orlando. This is the book that I say haunts me because it's been on and off of my TBR for years now. It keeps coming up when I'm, when I'm reading about like gender and science fiction and feminist sci-fi and the roots of that. Um, Orlando gets mentioned all the time because of its premise, this supposedly like immortal, ageless, um, young man Orlando from uh, the 16th century, I think, who, who lives for hundreds of years and does transform into a woman overnight at one point. And it just, yeah. So I keep coming across this book. I have checked it out from the library multiple times and never read it. So I decided that what I really needed was to get myself a pretty copy of it. And this is a vintage classics edition. It's very nice. It's got French flaps and all of that. It's very, it's very nice looking inside. So I will read Orlando. I did um, last month watch the, I think it's the 1993 movie adaptation of it with Tilda Swinton, which was interesting, but I thought, I was curious how much of the structure of the movie came from the structure of the book, and maybe that would work better for me in the book. Tilda Swinton, by the way, is amazing in the role of Orlando. Like, that is dead-on perfect casting for that, for that character, I guess. So, I will read Orlando at some point now that I have a copy of it. <laughs> More books that I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited for. A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin. I pre-ordered this book months and months and months ago. And when it arrived, I also, surprise, got a review copy from Tor, the publisher, which I did not expect to get. I don't really request review copies anymore, but that was just sort of an offhand thing that I, I sent somebody an email and I got it. So I gave away one copy and I kept the one that I got from the publisher. So um, it's, a, it's a finished copy, not an ARC. 
Well, this is the sequel to A Memory Called Empire, which is one of my favorite books, and why haven't I read it yet? I've just been so busy reading other things. Also, I kind of want to read, uh, reread A Memory Called Empire before getting to this one, just for the heck of it. We'll, we'll see what I end up doing, but yes, this is on my to-read list, and I will probably do a review of it when I read it and all that, that jazz. Um, I know I'm gonna love it. Um, I heard uh, Martine read a selection from it at Worldcon last year, and ugh, I got the feels. Like, I was immediately back in that world with those characters again, Mahit and Three Seagrass, and Alien Contact. It's gonna be great. Another book that was a surprise in the mail when it came is Rebuilding Tomorrow. This is an anthology edited by Tsana Dolichva, and it's put out by 12th Planet Press. I backed the Kickstarter for this last year, I think, and I got the ebook version and completely forgot that I was also supposed to get the paperback version, which was delayed because, you know, pandemic. Um, so this anthology is a follow-up to a previous one called Defying Doomsday, which I haven't read, but I own it on ebook, so I should get around to that. Um, but the back of this says, what if the apocalypse isn't the end of the world? And this follow-up to Defying Doomsday, disabled and chronically ill protagonists build new worlds from the remains of the old. So I think it's basically post-apocalyptic, post you know, after the dystopia, but hopeful, which is what really intrigued me about the series. So looking forward to this one, and now that I own the physical copy, I will probably read it faster because I forgot I had the ebook. <laughs> the story of my life. <laughs> I always forget I have the ebook. Another story collection, Never Have I Ever by Isabel Yap. This one, like Reconstruction by Elia Don Johnson, are put out by Small Beer Press, which is a small like indie press that I love. I've enjoyed so many of like the novels and the the short story collections that they put out. They have they have good taste. So I jumped on this one because I have read some of Isabel Yap's short fiction in the past, just here and there, and this is her first short story collection. Very excited about it. Um, do I recognize any of the stories in this? Yes, A Cup of Salt Tears is one that I recall people reading a couple of years ago. I know I read it, um, and a bunch of other things. So yes, I really want to get to this one soon. And it, I love Small Beer Press's font that they use inside of their books. I, what, what is it called? This is such a weird thing to want to talk about, but I just really like the typesetting in their books. Set in Centaur MT. Well, I should have recognized that. <laughs> anyway, yes, never have I ever. And lastly, for the physical books, of course I have The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. This is the fourth and final Wayfarers novel, and I know I'm gonna love it, or at least get super, super big feels from reading it. All the books in this series are relatively self-contained. You can kind of read them as standalones, different characters, different storylines, but they are all held together with these um, common themes, common feelings. I think of them as very strong found family books that also have a big focus on communities, I guess. Um, and yeah, all, all of the feels. So. I should get to this one pretty soon. Next up are the handful of audiobooks and ebooks that I've acquired so far this year. I want to take a moment to talk about buying audiobooks because I have some opinions on this now. Um, I have had a Libro FM subscription for about a year now, and if you've never heard of that service, it's it's an audiobook subscription service very much like Audible, except it's not owned by Amazon. It also gives some kickbacks to local independent bookstores. So like when I signed up for my subscription, I was able to connect it to the closest independent bookstore to me that I love, and they get a little bit of the proceeds, I guess. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So yeah, I really enjoyed Libro FM, and I found it to be a really great alternative to Audible. And the reason I'm saying all of this is because this year I am committed to basically not buying things from Amazon or companies that are obviously owned by Amazon. I have to have some exceptions, like I have bought some things from Book Depository, which is owned by Amazon, but that's the only reliable way that I trust to get things from the UK. So I'm making a little bit of an exception there, but 
I don't have an Audible subscription anymore because I've switched with Libro FM and I'm trying to not buy books directly from Amazon, like physical books. And I'm also trying to avoid Kindle books, which has been an interesting challenge to find other ways to buy ebook files that don't come through the Kindle store. I'm succeeding pretty well, except for that first batch of books that I acquired in January. <laughs> that came from Amazon because I had an Amazon gift card, but I am holding firm since January now. So that spiel over audiobooks. Um, Four Lost Cities by Annalee Newitz. I talked about this on a wrap up a little while ago. I think it was my first March wrap up. Um, so this is a nonfiction book where Newitz discusses four ancient cities that were lost and then found again. They were never actually lost. Um, and they use that to kind of discuss how cities come to an end. Are they catastrophically destroyed? Are they abandoned overnight? Or is it more complicated than that? I really enjoyed this. The, the archaeological aspect of it, the historical aspect, anthropological, is really interesting. It's not a huge deep dive into any of the four cities. It's a pretty slim book. It's not, it's not overly long. So I could have used more information, but it was just a really fun listen, especially because I enjoy the archaeology aspect of it. Next up is The Disordered Cosmos by Chanda Prescott Weinstein. This one I'm currently listening to, so I'm about a quarter of the way through it and I'm loving it. The way that it's written, the author's voice is just lovely. I'm really enjoying it. And it's kind of a mashup of a popular science book on physics and a memoir. Um, but while explaining many of the concepts of physics, particle physics, astrophysics, cosmology, um, the author is also discussing how this looks from the perspective of a black woman. So it's looking at issues of race and gender in this field, in this discipline that is overwhelmingly dominated by white male Western concepts and ways of thinking. And it's just, it's flipping some things around and looking at it in a very different way. So I'm getting that like really comforting information about physics that I like. I like just listening to this stuff. I really enjoy the, the topic of physics, but at the same time, these other things about race and stuff, it's very educational, very informative, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And then I just have two ebooks to mention. One is Paladin Strength by T. Kingfisher. This is the second in her Saints of Steel series set in this particular fantasy world. Um, I loved this and I talked about it more at length in my most recent March wrap up, so I will link that for you. Um, it was a little bit long perhaps, but I still super, super enjoyed it. It's a fantasy romance. And then I also have Rupetta by Nike Solway. I haven't read this one, but I went ahead and bought it for my Otherwise Award Winners project because I just wasn't sure I'd be able to get it from Interlibrary Loan. I'm not sure if the physical copy of it is out of print or not, so I just bought the ebook directly from the publisher and yay, that was much less expensive than trying to track down a physical copy to buy. So I will get to that one hopefully soon. I really want to read um, a batch of Otherwise Award winners over the next two months, hopefully, and do another installment in that reading project. Those are all of the books that I have acquired over the first three months of this year, and uh, hopefully a few of these will show up in wrap-ups in the future and I will actually read them before getting a whole bunch of other books, I say, knowing very well that I have a stack of pre-orders coming to me in April. <laughs> time to get a move on. So let me know if any of these books sounded interesting to you. Have you read any of them? Leave me a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back to talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.